Hello everyone, thank you so much for watching. Before you do anything else, go ahead and like and subscribe and activate the notification by clicking on that bell below so you get notified each time I upload a new video. So it's time for another drawing tutorial and we're going with one of my favorites, which is Pablo Picasso. Pablo Picasso was born on October 25th, 1881 in Malaga, Spain. He's a painter, sculptor, printmaker, ceramicist, and he's also the co- founder of the Cubist movement. But before Cubism and that movement that he was a part of, Pablo Picasso was very talented and very gifted at a very, very young age. And to prove that, take a look at this painting he painted when he was 14 years old. This is titled The First Communion and he painted it in 1896. I think this is very impressive for someone who was 14 years old. And in 1897, he painted Science and Charity. So he was around 15 or 16, depending if he painted this before October or after. So to be making these very realistic and detailed works is very impressive for a kid his age. Obviously, he was under the direction of his father, but still, I mean, he painted them himself. I wish I was that talented when I was that age. Pablo Picasso's work comes in many forms and one of those forms is the blue period that he painted between 1902 and 1903. And what characterizes the paintings from the blue period, it's um, lonely figures, people absorbed in thought, they look hungry, cold. One of the paintings from that period is The Two Sisters. This was painted in 1902. And Woman and Child by the Sea, which was painted also in 1902. These paintings were influenced by the artist El Greco, another Spanish artist, specifically the painting St. John the Evangelist, which he painted in 1604, is where Picasso got some of his influence from. So my favorite painting from the Blue Period is La Vie, which was painted in 1903. And La Vie is French for life. And this painting was very influenced by El Greco. Most notable reference are the hands and the fingers and the oddly stretched anatomies of the characters or the people in this painting. So what we're going to draw today is going to be just the man and the girl on the left. The man was painted after his recently deceased friend Casagemas. He actually shot himself and one of his lovers, Germain. It is also said that this painting is influenced by the terror magician card, naturalism, and Spanish mysticism. I don't see the reference to the magician card, but I'll let you decide that. And this painting does not depict any real event. It kind of allows the spectator to imagine what's happening with everyone involved in this painting. All right, so it's time to start. Grab your pencil. I'm going to use a Sharpie. I've already done some lines just so I don't mess it up. Let's get this started. It's going to be, I think, probably the most difficult drawing tutorial I've done on this channel, but we can do it. The first thing we're going to start off with is, is the guy, Cassie So I'm going to start towards the top and start with his eyes. And you can sit around. I'm, I think I'm going to, I don't think mine's exactly centered. Maybe he is, but she won't be. So just start with the eyes. I'm going to start with the eyebrow, make a line. And right below it, make a, I guess that's a greater than symbol almost, or less than, depending what's on this side. And you connect it, inside you add a circle for the eye. And then kind of extend this line a little bit and bring it down, because it's this little line right here. And then... On the other side, the eye is going to be a lot smaller, so, because it's three quarters of you. Eyebrow, another greater than sign, the eye inside, and then you're going to bring this down for the nose. And then you're going to curve it, and then bring it out a little bit, so you create like your little nostril. Now for the lips, it's almost like drawing the letter M. And there's a line right below it. And the bottom lip is not like attached, but there's just a shadow underneath it. So we'll just draw a line below. And then the side of his face. You can bring it out to make the cheek. Bring it in. 
very close to the lip and then bring it down for the chin. Now his forehead, you go up. He actually has a very big forehead. <laughs> you bring it down. You don't want to bring it all the way down because her hair is down here. And then just bring it around to add his hair. He has very puffy hair. And then we'll go ahead and add a U down here to make the woman's hair. An upside down U or a sad face. And then right above right here you'll make a line. Another upside down U for the ear. Now his shoulder, just bring down the line and extend it. Now let's go with the girl. Her eyebrow. And we're going to draw an eye basically the same way we did that one. And then her eyelid. You can't see the other eye because it's in the shadows, so you're just going to bring this line down to make her forehead. Then her nose. Maybe the eyebrow starts here, but you can't see the eye because all of this will be shadowed in. The nose. Bring this down, and then the lips. Now her shoulder is covering part of her chin, so make a line there. Extend this out, and then a ear right here, the inside of it. And then just make the hair connect and come to the back. If I'm going too fast, it can also slow me down. And it doesn't matter if they're not anatomically correct because there is an exaggeration in their limbs. They're a little longer, skinnier, that type of thing. So then I'll bring this line down for her back. You're going to go out a little bit because it's her bum. And then her thigh. And her calf. So now we're out of room, so we won't be able to do the feet. So this hand is resting on his chest, so you're going to bring this up and then out because that's where the hand starts. This is right where your underarm line would be. Come across, up for the elbow, then up. That's the hand. Now you bring a line straight down here, and then you're going to go out because this is where her boob is at. Her nips. And then come back down. Come straight. And then her navel just go out a little bit. Her thigh. And then go in. And then this will be, I guess, where her knee meets. Her knee, and then go down. Now right here, we'll draw his little underwear. And then just, kind of like a triangle almost, and we'll draw it, bring it back in. So right next to this underwear line is her, it's her other leg coming out. So there's her thigh. You can bring it down for the knee. Then take it back. And then her calf right here. Then bring it up to connect to this one. Here, you're going to go up to make his chest. Down to make his leg. Thigh. It goes in right here where the knee part will be. Out for the calf and then in. So then it also begins where the underwear line ends. So bring it down. Now there's shadows here, so if your lines are not perfect, it doesn't matter because you can just shadow it in. 
and then bring it down. See, his other leg would be right here, but it's in shadow, so you can't really see it. So now it looks like he has one. But once you start coloring in and add shadows, you can bring that in. Bring this down for his shoulder, his bicep. What is this called? Curve it in. And then his arm comes out from here. So don't worry about your shapes because once you color it, you can hide or add or accentuate things. And then the hand, I'm not very good at hands. So throw a line there, go up for this finger, down, down, his thumb's right here, his palm. So I'm not actually going to draw all the fingers. I'm going to smear this down just so I don't have to draw it since I'm not very good at that. I'm going to add a ground. And there you have, you know, his friend Casagamas, Jermaine, his ex-lover. And that's the drawing pretty much. So what's going to make this great is the way you color it, the way you accentuate things, the way you bring things out. It will take it from looking very elementary like it does here to a little bit more sophisticated. So let me go paint this and I'll come back and show you what it turned out to look like. And also what uh, I used to do it. Alright, so I'm done. I kind of love it. I purposely left this white just so there's a contrast. I use acrylic paint, a Chromatech watercolor brush pens. I do not recommend these. I bought these on Amazon. They don't work very good. So I use the watercolor tubes. They're the really cheap kind and those work better than the pens do. And then acrylic, pastel, and that's basically it. I layered this with the cream color acrylic over what I had done with these brushes that are not that good. So this is my version of La Vie, one of my favorite, the, my favorite painting from the blue period of Pablo Picasso. And I think it definitely resembles La Vie. Obviously it's not as good as Picasso's, but for being something that I finished in a day, I think it's pretty cool. If you are interested and owning this, just hit me up on Instagram, the enemy, I'll leave it right here, or send me an email. This could be yours for a very small fee. It's on actually a uh, watercolor paper, but it's the good kinds, like $14 a sheet. So that's it for today's video. I hope you enjoyed it, and stay tuned for part two. We'll be doing Pablo Picasso's Rose Period. And that's it for now. Adios, bye.